Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Play BS Zelda no Densetsu, also known as BS The Legend of Zelda. What's going on? All right, we've got our killer fucking boomerang, and we're ready to take some shit down. Um, in our last video, we uh, took out Dungeon 6. We are ready to take out Dungeon 7 today, as would naturally happen after Dungeon 6. We only have two more pieces of the Triforce to collect. We are almost there. Uh, first, though, I'm going to do a few things, but... um. We're mainly just going to make our, make our way to the 7th dungeon because not too much to do in between, but um, I don't want to be here. See, I'm trying to figure out, apparently, how you um, can teleport around with the ocarina depends on which direction you're facing or something like that. I don't even pretend to understand, but whatever. Anyway, now that we have our ladder, boat, bridge, whatever the hell you want to call it, we can cross this tiny little river. We are ready to explore a whole new area. Oh my god. Falling rocks everywhere. Falling rocks only do very minimal damage. Ooh, I can get that bomb because my boomerang goes all the way across the screen. Too many fucking Zoras in this area, though. Not really worth it to get all those bombs, is it? Oh well. Jeez, no matter what I do, I can't seem to dodge the boulders. I think I'm having an inkling that I should bomb this random spot in the wall here! Oh my god, look at that. Whoa, something opened up. How could that have happened? Alright, and there we are. We have actually the final heart container that you can pick up on the world map. Um, the last two heart containers that you see that are missing from my life will come from dungeons, so... That is that. Oh, guess what? Life was blown into the Armo statues, by the way. Just in case you didn't know. Finishing that last dungeon brought these things to life. So all you have to do is touch them, and they will attack you. Some of them are fast, some of them are slow. They're easily dispatched with the super killer boomerang, though. No problem. All right, let's get out of here. All right, so this is a fun little area. Um, there's actually an item hidden here, and it's hidden right there. We've got the power bracelets. All right, this power bracelet is actually necessary to proceed in the game. We have to use it to push rocks on the overworld map. Uh, no different from the power of pushing rocks in dungeons, so... Yeah, I don't get it, but whatever. It's how the game works. We also have to kill both of these lionels, or it will not let us push this rock. And you have to push it from the right, because fuck you, that's why I'm a Nintendo game. That little staircase, uh, surrounded by four rocks, is a shortcut. You can use it to teleport to other areas of the map that also have a staircase surrounded by four rocks, but we won't really be using that because we're pretty much end game right now, and the last two dungeons are up here in the mountains, um, with the final dungeon being in a secret location that I'm not going to talk about right now. But we'll get to that when we get to that. I need to find me another dungeon. I don't know why I'm so bent on killing everything in the screen, so let's just get out of here and go down these stairs and... Oh my god, there it is! Dungeon 7! Hello. What's going on? Let's traverse. Level 7. Welcome. Alright, we've got ourselves some blue dark nuts, but um, our killer boomerang can really take these guys out pretty well. Um, you have to remember, though, that this killer boomerang unless I miss something serious, is not in the original Legend of Zelda. So these guys are incredible dicks when it comes to trying to fight them normally. You have to get a well-placed bomb, um, or just be lucky with your sword. Whatever. They're, they're huge dicks, and I really don't like dealing with them. I didn't really have to kill them all in that room, but I wanted to show off that the boomerang is really effective. Now look at that. There's a, a doorway over to the left on that map, so... Nope. Yeah. Just proving that those map squares don't mean anything. They don't lead anywhere. I have tried it many times in many dungeons. Doesn't work, sorry. Um, there are secret rooms in some dungeons, but looking at those exits on that little sub-map, they don't go anywhere, so... Not really sure what's up with that, though. Not gonna worry about it. The magic rod is kind almost a pointless weapon. Um, it's a free ranged attack, but it's kind of weak. And now that we have this magic boomerang uh, of death, there's really no need to use it. Ever. A pointless room. Some bubbles in it. Why not? Fucking blue whiz robes. Oh my god. They are probably the biggest dicks in the game. I've talked about them briefly in the last 
dungeon, but uh, there's actually a lot more of them in this dungeon, and there will be even more of them in the final dungeon. They're just everywhere. For some reason, that bubble didn't curse me. Uh, it's a little weird sometimes how this works, but whatever. I'll take what I can get. Hey, look, a key. Oh, wow. That worked out so well. Ah, uh, that explains it. Uh, well, well, obviously. Wow, thanks for that incredibly useful information, man. That you, this one might be the most useless of the old men because he's pretty much telling us the whole goal of the game when we are what six eighths, which is three quarters of the way, finished with all of the dungeons. So, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, don't need to kill these wizards, but I do want to get that key. Fun thing to note, this magic boomerang will actually kill the blue wizrobe while he's doing his little teleport shit around the room, so not only does it nerf blue dark nuts, it nerfs the blue wizrobes. Snazzy. Oh wow, cool. I didn't realize that my shield deflected magic. I actually forgot that it did that. When you have the big shield, it deflects magic bolts. Well, I normally don't like finding fairy rooms because I find them a little pointless, but I actually need it at that time, so... I am grateful for that fairy room! Give those! I'm actually, uh, I shouldn't be over here. I'm in a part of the dungeon that I should be in later in the game. Um, and I'm gonna give you a word of warning. That staircase in the top right? Avoid it! Because it will basically put you on a circular path with no return, except to go all the way through the dungeon again. Um, but I took it anyway because I'm an idiot. I mean, I like to show off everything, so here we are. As you can see, the staircase disappeared, so I actually can't go back to where I was. So, to get back to the room where I was, I have to go all the way back around again through the dungeon. And why the hell am I trying to fight these dark nuts? What is my problem? Wow, this is just ridiculous. Just die already, holy shit. There we go. Alright, we got bombs. We got a bomb of a wall. We're gonna bomb the shit out of it. Oh wait, it's not that one. It's the one on the right! There we go. Look at all that money! If you will notice, on the map, this was actually in an area where there was no little path leading off from the room on the map, so... Yeah, that doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Um, once you see what, the, what shape this map makes out, uh, it'll make sense where I am, but... We'll get to that a little bit later, because I don't have a map yet, even though I should. I'm also getting a shit ton of money here at the end of the game where I really don't need it. I can't think of a time where I'm going to shoot 500 arrows at something, but you never know. It's good to know that I could if I really wanted to. Truth be told, I only need one more arrow to... I only need one arrow to beat this game, not one more. One total. Um, there's only one thing left that I actually have to shoot an arrow at. But uh, I'm getting at least two videos ahead of myself, so... I'm just going to sit here and stab these Gibdos till they die. Because they're frozen in place. Snazzy. Um, yep, a pretty pointless room here. Nothing to note, and wow, there's a bomb. Very cool. Does that mean we can use it in this dungeon room? No, obviously not, and I'm gonna do it anyway. Yep, nothing happens. Well, whatever. Anyway, we are back in the beginning part of the dungeon. Uh, we've been here before. Like I said, this is how you get back to that room that we were in, where the staircase appeared in the top right and the door opened to the left. I should have gone into the door to the left, but it didn't matter because I'm supposed to go up here and to the right because there are some things that I need to collect that I have not yet collected. I keep thinking red rupees are great in this game, but they're actually just one rupee. Um, my, you know, later game Zelda logic is telling me a red rupee is 20 rupees, and I really need to get them, but... I want to get this map. Hey, look at that. The map makes a skull. That's kind of nifty. Uh, it's a nice break from the uh, letters spelling out Cento Giga, if you didn't notice. S-T period G-I-G-A. The producer of the game. Uh, yep, they put a call out plug to themselves in the game. There you go. Oh, 
All right, we're actually in a new room of the game. Um, I was, I went south from that room where the traps are, and you get the bomb, and you end up in here. We can go down this staircase, and there is something on the other side. Something nice, something beautiful. It is the other side of the dungeon. Welcome to it. Uh, we can kill these. Oh, I got two and one there. Nice. Very cool. And bombs. Getting bombs in a room is always a clue that somewhere in a future room you're going to need bombs. And here's the fly as an uh, an enemy in a dungeon, which is kind of what he was in the original game. So here he is. He's actually handled pretty simply with the killer boomerang. I killed both of them at once. Very nice. So remember earlier when I said it will make sense where I am, I'm actually in the Eyes of the Skull, which is an off-of-the-map area. That's why these are secret rupee rooms. Earlier I was in the, the eye over there on the left side of the map, so as you can see, fairy, lots of money. Pretty cool. If you're looking for that kind of money, you know, at this point. Not that I can say that anybody really need. This is just ridiculous. Yeah. 632 rupees. You never know. We're going to have to buy some meats. Lots and lots of meats. Why, with this money, I could buy 100 pounds of meat if I were to assume that one of those meats was one pound. All right, that staircase actually leads to the dungeon item, but we can't get to it from here. What we can do, though, is grab this key and make our way back around um, this room where we have to pretty much go one way through it all the time. If you'll notice, I'm actually to the point in the game now where I have extra keys. There's really no reason to be collecting so many keys. This game, um, a lot of people will remember from the classic version, too. There's You can have extra keys. Um, and keys you can carry to other dungeons, so you could pretty much speedrun some of the later dungeons if you collect a lot of extra keys in the first dungeons. Anyway, we've got the red candle, which is the item for the dungeon. I also froze that bat in place somehow. The red candle lets you use the candle infinitely in a room, um, although you can only have two flames going at once, but utterly useless, if you ask me. Uh, there's really no point to it. You use the candle to light up a room, it's a really poor weapon. As you can see, it doesn't even damage whiz ropes. So, yeah, basically at the end of the game here, we're just collecting filler items. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now that the items that we get from the final dungeon, bar one of them, is also very useless. So, anyway. Yikes. All right, so now I'm gonna make my way back to that room earlier where I shouldn't have gone uh, down the stairs. So, I'll see you there. All right, welcome back to the room. We're not going to go down that staircase because I don't want to get trapped again. Speaking of traps, here's some traps. Oh, that was not friendly at all. Hey, a manhandle it. Now, I killed it the normal way last time. I'm going to show you how to kill it quickly. There you go. That's it. All you got to do is set a bomb in its path, and if you blow up the center part of its and all of the heads, it will die with one bomb. Painfully simple compared to its Oracle of Seasons, uh you know, remake that's ridiculously hard. You have to use, you know, the magic boomerang on it. You've got all the sand pits everywhere. It's not fun. And oh my god, it's the boss of the dungeon, which is a recolor of the first dungeon boss. But this one is stronger, and he shoots stuff at us. And Yeah, bombs don't hurt it, but that's okay. Uh, the magic boomerang can hurt it, and so can your sword. Really, just stab it a bunch of times. If you have full life when you come in here, there's really no reason you should die, even if you tank him, so. That's that. We've got our seventh piece of the Triforce. We only have one more to go. Um, and then we get to kill Ganon or something, or stab him in the face. And what is that I saw by my bombs? What's this? Ooh, that's an infinity symbol, isn't it? Holy shit, I have infinite bombs. Motherfucking 4th of July going on in here. Hey, ghost, what's going on? Come on out and join my celebration. I can blow up all of the shit now. Yes, this is a BS Zelda thing um, that doesn't happen in the normal game, obviously. Anyway, that's going to be it for this time. I'll see you guys next time. Later.